Alright, we are back with another Total Drama video, and for today I decided to speculate how every season of Total Drama would have played out if the winner was decided by a jury vote. Now obviously a jury vote is the conventional way of deciding a winner on Survivor and Big Brother, however every season of Total Drama, except for action, was decided by a challenge. This is probably due to there being a public vote and having multiple endings, as it's easier to make it a tight contest where it seems like anyone could win, therefore making it easier to make multiple endings. But here, we're going to toss all that aside and make every season a straight up jury vote. Now for this exercise, I'll be mainly focusing on the people that made the merge, as that's typically the cutoff point for making the jury on Survivor, and to an extent on Big Brother as well. Now, something I didn't entirely realize before I started putting the video together is that in most seasons, doing this would actually create an even-numbered jury, which opening opens up the door for ties, as every season of Total Drama it has a final two. But that's just what we're going to have to work with here. So we have six seasons of Total Drama to go through, and of course, spoilers for every season, so don't watch if you don't want to be spoiled. And with that said, let's get started. So starting off, we have Total Drama Island. Here we have a final two of Owen versus Gwen. And we have a 10-person jury, as there are 10 people that were voted out after the merge. Now, while the season wasn't decided by a jury vote, we got a glimpse at who each eliminated player was leaning towards in the finale. Among those that made the merge, we saw six of them side with Gwen, that being Eva, Trent, Bridget, Lindsay, DJ, and Lashana and four siding with Owen, Izzy, Jeff, Duncan, and Heather. But then Chris gave Gwen and Owen a chance to explain what they would do with the money if they won, with Gwen saying she would split it with Owen and use the rest to pay for college, while Owen would throw a party. This convinces Bridget, DJ, and Lindsay to go over to Owen's side, so I guess if we're going off that, Owen probably wins 7-3. But I guess if we're examining the votes a bit more closely, we have Eva, who seems a bit surprising as a Gwen vote, you know, as they didn't really spend much time together in the game. However, I'm guessing she wanted a woman to win and probably found Owen more annoying than Gwen was. Trent is a pretty obvious Gwen vote, nothing too surprising there. Bridget is a bit more surprising as we saw her have a closer relationship to Gwen throughout the season and we never really saw Bridget interact with Owen. The party is probably what motivated her to flip, However, I'm sure that if the jury got to ask more questions, one might have been able to reel her back in. Lindsay is also a bit of a surprise, in the sense that she initially said it with Gwen. Gwen was rude to her from the start, and really was, wasn't was too close to her for a lot of the season, while Owen had a much more positive relationship with her. Even more surprising is the fact that Beth sided with Owen from the start, so you'd think Lindsay would have gone there based on that. DJ is someone who could have gone either way. While most of his friends said with Owen, he probably figured deep down that Gwen deserved him more, only to cave in when Owen promised his party. Izzy is a locked Owen vote, and nothing too surprising there. Jeff is another locked Owen vote, however, much of his elimination episode was dedicated to him and Gwen getting closer, so that's something at least. Lashana is a pretty locked Gwen vote. Obviously, later seasons have Duncan and Gwen dating, but in Island at least, he did have a closer relationship to Owen. So he's an Owen vote there. And Heather was never voting for Gwen, so it makes sense why she sides with Owen here. So with that, Owen has four absolutely locked votes, with, while Gwen has three absolute locked votes. And while we saw the remaining swing votes go to Owen, I think that if there had been more questions and had been more set up like a final travel council, and this had been more re realistic, I think Lindsay probably votes for Owen, Bridget votes for Gwen, and that leaves DJ as a deciding vote to where he could either give Owen the win 6-4 or cause a tie by voting for Gwen. My sense is that he would be convinced to vote for Owen simply because his closest allies are voting for Owen as well. So I think Owen inherently has the advantage here, but there are opportunities for Gwen to get votes as well. So that's Island for you. Moving on to Total Drama Action, where we have Duncan versus Beth. Now, this is a bit more interesting as we actually had a jury vote on this season. However, we saw seven votes being read, but among those were DJ and Gwen, both of whom are pre-merge boots. So it's very wonky with that situation. So 
for this exercise, we're going to, again, have it just be the people that made the merge voting. So with that, that leaves us with a six person jury. We have Lashana, Lindsay, who are absolutely locked Beth votes, while Courtney and Owen are locked Duncan votes. That leaves us with Justin and Harold as sort of the swing votes. Now, while Justin fought with Duncan during his elimination episode, I think he would respect Duncan more as he saw Beth as someone he could easily manipulate during much of the season. Now, granted, Beth did sort of distance himself, herself from him, but then again, Duncan did work more directly with Justin throughout the game from a strategic lens and probably saw Duncan as a more strategic style player than Beth was. So I think in that case, he would vote for Duncan. And at least Harold, who I'd say is a Beth vote in this situation. I thought about the possibility of Duncan bullying him into giving him the win, but given Harold's arc throughout the season where he becomes more confident, grows a backbone, and stands up to Duncan more, I don't think that's something he would do at this point. So, if you've been counting, that basically leaves us with a tie. Another tie, to be precise. Now, considering the actual finale allowed pre-merged people to vote, I'm guessing in this situation we would allow, we would open up the jury vote to the rest of the cast in that case. So let's let's do that. See what happens there. So Duncan would have the lock votes of Heather, Gwen, and Jeff, while Beth would have the lock votes of Trent and DJ, as we saw that on the show. That leaves Bridget and Izzy as the deciding votes. Now I think Izzy would vote, however, Owen votes, which would give Duncan the advantage, and that leaves Bridget as the deciding vote. Where Bridget's tough to assess as. I think she would gravitate more towards Duncan, but I think she would respect Beth's development over the two seasons more, with her going from this awkward Girl Scout with braces to a confident teenager without braces. But in the end, I think she would vote for Duncan, probably because Jeff and a lot of her closer allies would be as well. And I feel like in that situation, Duncan would win 8-5. to five. So in either case, I think Duncan has the advantage if we're including the merge and the pre-merge people. And again, going by this exercise, I would say Duncan wins this jury vote. Now we're moving on to Total Drama World Tour, where we have Heather versus Alejandro. Now, this is a bit of a weird situation, as six people were eliminated post-merge, although one of them was Blainly, who was only in the game for two episodes. So I'll include her here, which again, creates a six-person jury. Again, another even-numbered jury. Um, so... The thing about this season is that we got a fourth Aftermath show during the final three round where, like an island, the eliminated players got to choose which of the final three they're supporting. Now, just looking at the people that made the merge, like the initial breakdown is one person on Team Heather, that being Blainly, but even then, it's only because she was too injured to even move. One person on Team Alejandro, that being Courtney, and the other three being on Team Cody. Well, technically only Owen and Duncan, but... We can safely assume Sierra would have been too had she been at the Aftermath show. But obviously once Cody's eliminated at the final three, they have to choose between Heather and Alejandro. So let's go through the votes. First we have Owen, who I think is a Heather vote. While we doesn't seem he doesn't like either of them by the end, but I think Alejandro's manipulation is more on his mind at this point and sees Heather as a lesser evil. Courtney is a locked Alejandro vote as she was attracted to him. She, did, she didn't seem burned by him on her way out, and obviously she chooses to be on Tam Alejandro during the Aftermath show, so that shows that she has a per lot of support there for Alejandro. Then we have Blainly, who, again, is technically on Team Heather, but I think if she was allowed to choose for herself, I think she would vote for Alejandro. You know, like, I, again, Heather was the one to call out Blainly for cheating in the Gross Eating Challenge, which played a strong factor in her elimination. Plus, I think she would have found a Alejandro win to be make for better TV, as Alejandro is more charming than Heather and probably would have done better for ratings. So right now, we, we're at two votes for Alejandro, one vote for Heather. But as I will describe below, I think the rest of the votes will be for Heather. Duncan, again, I think is a Heather vote. Now, I did consider him being an Alejandro vote, as while Duncan didn't particularly like Alejandro, there could be room for Duncan to respect his game, but I think by the end of it, I think Duncan would probably be won over by Heather's redemption arc. So we're at 2-2. Sierra is a pretty clear Heather vote, as she never particularly liked Alejandro, and I think as a super fan, she's 
a bit more starstruck by Heather, a major figure in the early seasons, and of course seeing her redemption arc on the season. And I think Cody is another clear Heather vote, as she says after being eliminated that Heather's been pretty good to him all season, and says he doesn't want Alejandro to win. So, going off that, I think we have a pretty clear Heather win, 4-2. to two. And if you want to remove Blaine for only being in the game for two episodes, it's an even clearer Heather win at 4-1. to one. So, again, I feel like despite this being an even number jury, Heather should have the advantage coming into this jury vote. Now we're moving on to Revenge of the Island, where we have Cameron versus Lightning. Now here we have a four-person jury, you know, continuing with the even-numbered format. But, again, I feel like this scenario is a pretty clear Cameron win, so let's run through the votes. We have Mike and Zoe, who are absolutely locked Cameron votes, as they were both very close allies to him during the season, and he did virtually nothing to wrong them. So, right there, Cameron is at least guaranteed a tie, he just needs one more vote to win. I think Lightning has one locked vote in Joe, as... While their alliance crumbled towards the end, Joe respects Lightning more as the strongest competitor. And we even see during the finale where Joe is supporting Lightning in the challenge. You know, and again, that makes Scott the deciding vote to where he can either give Cameron a win, 3-1, to one, or send it into a tie. Now, we did see Scott not really like Cameron during the season, saw him as weak, and even tried voting him out at several points. Even so, I think Scott is the type of person that would respect Cameron for voting him out at the Final Four. So, you know, I feel like going off that game logic, I mean, I would think that Cameron would win 3-1. to one. So, again, this is pretty, pretty straightforward to run through here. Now we're moving on to Total Drama All-Stars, where we have Mike versus Zoe. Obviously, everyone's favorite Final Two. Now, once again, we have an even-numbered jury. However, there's some caveats here, as Duncan is in prison at this point. Uh, for now, let's count him and see what happens. So. I'm not entirely sure where Duncan goes here. On one hand, I like to think of Duncan as someone that would vote based on game, as he's one of the more strategic players in the grand scheme of total drama. And I feel like going off that, he would vote for Mike as he viewed him as the bigger threat, you know, like through him knowing Mal from Juvie. But based on other seasons we've covered, he hasn't really voted for the person that played the better game with voting for Owen and Heather. And if we're going off that, we see him have a more positive relationship with Zoe throughout the season. And considering that, he would vote for Zoe in this case, so I'll give the edge to Zoe there. Cameron would also vote for Zoe, as he's probably burned by how Mal tormented him and contributed to his elimination. Alejandro, I'm going to say is a Mike vote. While Mike did turn on him, I, did, I think Alejandro is someone that would vote based off game, and... I believe Mike played a better game than Zoe, so I think he would vote for Mike in this case. Plus, I think he would view Zoe as someone that was slow to pick up on Mal's man manipulation, which he probably wouldn't respect very much. Courtney is a Mike vote. She's demonstrated in the past that she's willing to vote based off game, even if it's an unpopular opinion. And without someone she's really attached to, I think she would side with Mike here. Gwen is a locked Zoe vote, again, as I feel like they had a better relationship throughout the season. And then there's Scott, who warns Zoe about Mike after he's eliminated. While Scott isn't the only person on the season to do so, what I find interesting here is that he does this despite Mike and Zoe being the last ones remaining in the game at that point. It'd be one thing if Scott were eliminated before then and wanted to warn Zoe to take out a bigger threat, but the fact that it's the end of the game and there's no more means of voting out the big threat, you know, like, and the only way she would be able to defeat Mal would be to beat him in the final challenge, that does lead me to believe that Scott wants Zoe to win. Again, if that warning had come earlier in the game and Zoe failed to vote out Mike, then I would assume Mike, Scott would vote for Mike to win out of respect and blame Zoe for not doing what's optimal for her game. But because it happens here, at the end, I actually think Scott wanted Zoe to win. And with that, I think we have a pretty clear Zoe win, 4-2. to two. Even if you exclude Duncan from the jury, Zoe would still win 3-2. to two. And I think that sort of reflects a pattern that we've been seeing in a lot of these seasons, where I believe that a lot of these players would be voting against the villain of the season, even if that villain is playing the better game. So, in this case, I think Zoe would win 3-2. to two. Lastly, we have Total Drama Pocketail Island, where we have Sean versus Sky. And 
for once we have an odd number jury, meaning we don't have to worry about a potential tie. Now first we have Dave, who's a bit unhinged by this point. The question for Dave is how bitter he is against Sky for rejecting him. He was mostly mad at her, but we see a lot of that coming from Chris fanning the flames during the finale, so I feel like a lot of his attitude at any given moment would depend on how he's feeling, you know, like, and we see from the finale that it tends to fluctuate quite a lot. Now with that said, Dave did get along with Sean quite a bit, and in Sean's ending, we see Dave not be as upset about the outcome as he is in Sky's ending. So I think he's content voting for Sean, although with the right jury performance, Sky could convince him otherwise. Then there's Scarlett and Max, who were ejected from the game, and like Duncan, you could debate whether they would be voting as in this situation. Now, in this situation, I'm going to assume that they're allowed to vote, you know, but it's really up in the air where they actually go. Now, Sky was the one to foil their plan of blowing up the island, which I could see Scarlet respecting her for. We also saw at several points in the season where it seems like Scarlet perceives Sky as the bigger threat, which leads me to believe that she could vote for Sky in the situation. Maxo is a bit unclear, as he doesn't really have that much relationship with either Sean or Sky. You know, like, and I feel like he'd be less likely to respect the fact that Sky was the one to foil his plan of blowing up the island. You know, it could be Sean, as they're both kind of wacky characters. You know, like he could relate to Sean more and probably give him the win. You know, I could also see him voting for Sky. Like again, partly due to blowing up the island, but I could also see the story of. Sky rejecting Dave's advances, seeing that as kind of evil, so again, it could e e go either way with him. Then there's Jasmine, who is a locked Sean vote, as they had a really close relationship, and finally, there's Sugar. Now, Sugar didn't like either of them by the end. However, her hatred of Sky was more blatant than Sean's, so I would say she's a Sean vote in this situation. In any case, regardless of how Max ends up voting, I think Sean has the advantage coming to the jury vote. You know, like, without Max or Scarlet, I feel like he would win pretty clearly in that situation, like, three, like, two to one. But even with Max and Scarlet there, I think he would at least get one of those votes to where it would probably then become a three to two vote where he wins there. So I feel like in that situation, Sean is probably the winner here. And there we go, that'll do it for this video. Now, I'll admit, I had a lot of fun putting this together as, as a pretty big Survivor fan. I've always wondered how these seasons might have played out had there been a jury vote. So, running through it was a lot of fun. But, again, I feel like part of the reason why it was difficult is because I feel like a lot of these finalists are pretty close in terms of their relationships and the overall quality in their game. And the other challenge was really determining how strategic these players would think when deciding their votes. I mean, I would like to think that they would vote based on game, but I think as we saw here, I think a lot of them would vote based on personal reasoning. So that's something that made this jury vote interesting to consider, as I don't think, even in the more decisive scenarios, I don't think there's a clear blowout in a lot of cases. So I thought that was a fun exercise to run through. But Again, that'll do it for the video. I have more planned in the future for Survivor, for Total Drama, and for other stuff that I feel like making. But for now, that is the video. See ya.